of a New York City where everybody's got a safe, decent place to live, where kids all know that they could go to a high quality integrated school, where you've got a pathway to a good job, where you know there'll be safety in your community in a way that you and your neighbors produce together, where your city will have your back. It is a powerful vision. It is a New York vision, you know. At the moment when we've got folks walking up here from Venezuela, seven weeks coming out of the jungles, and we also have folks who are like Google workers moving their families here. The future of New York City is where all those kids go to school together, where every one of their families has a decent place to live. And that agenda is what will be brought by the powerful progressive agenda that this movement is building. One thing I really like about what this progressive caucus is doing is pushing on creative powers that New York City has that we don't always use to elevate that uh, set of progressive ideas. So Shahana spoke about the bill to give paid sick leave to gig workers. That's within New York City's power. And yet no city or state and the US hasn't done it. And the New York City Council can be the first place to do it in the United States. <laughs> by using our money to advance justice, uh, by supporting a public bank, and by looking at what our money's doing when it's in our accounts. We've tried to do that in the controller's office by standing up to BlackRock on climate and standing up to Wells Fargo when they discriminate against black homeowners. I love that the Progressive Caucus is thinking about how we deploy our money in support of our values. And finally, the housing agenda here to say, yes, of course, we need more housing in New York City, but more of that housing has to be outside of the speculative marketplace, has to be things like a 21st century Mitchell Lama, has to be owned by our families and our communities and permanently affordable, building our land trust, building the footprint of social housing in New York City. That is the agenda that helps get us the New York that we will all be so lucky to live in. Thanks very much, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for Now I'd like to call our champions leading the transparency and policing package. Council Member Caban, Jose, Hudson, and Aviles, and Victor Dempsey from the Abolish the Gang Theater. Good morning, y'all. Oh, nothing gets me more fired up than being in community with you all. Thank you for all the work that you do. Get up for yourselves. I could do the real quick, like wholeheartedly support the, you know, support this whole legislative agenda. We're gonna all be talking about sort of like the progressive bona fides of each piece of legislation. But I want to use my little time for us to talk about power and how important not just this suite of, of legislation and the fact that they are in one place in relationship to one another but the fact that it is grounded, anchored, and rooted by the leadership and work that the people behind me do. And that has everything to do with how we are going to be able to build the power necessary to pass this. Because understanding that each of these pieces of legislation alone is not gonna do the work of making our, our city safer and healthier overall, but is in passing all of them and talking about all of them in relationship to one another. It is folks like the Hold Solitary Coalition showing up with, for the folks that make the road who are going to show up for new economy projects, who are going to show up for you and you and you and us collectively. Because we know that power does not concede power. And if this, if this cohort and if this caucus is going to be able to, to use the muscle of all the members it has, it means building power outside of this institution. And we can't be afraid of that. And we are going to reclaim power, let people control, the people behind us take over that power to deliver the New York that we deserve. So I am so proud, again, that we are including my bill that's going to require the NYPD to report on complaints of misconduct. I'm so proud of it, to, to support all of it, but more than that, so powerful. So proud to support the theory of change and the strategies we're going to use to get there. So thank you. Yeah. should 
we can agree that a clear picture of how the NYPD is operating, especially in communities that have historically bore the brunt of racist and discriminatory policing. This is how we make informed decisions as a democracy and is a first step to ensuring that true public safety is based on equity and dignity for all. So the How Many, how many Stops Act is really about common sense, good government bills. Intro 538 and 586. We need sunlight. We need to know how our agencies do their work how their resources are being spent. So I'll let my colleague, Councilmember Hudson, talk about the, uh, the other. Councilmember Hudson! Well, the, the bill number is not loading for me. <laughs> I can't give you We can look it up, we can look it up. Yeah, but essentially, um, I think many... No, it was a different one. It's okay. Way before. 
NYPD uses that is instrumentally racist. 90% of the people on the database are black and brown males. You cannot tell me that only black and brown males are in gay. That's unheard of. So today, the Progressive Caucus stands with me and the coalition who is saying that enough is enough. We will not be surveillance. We will not be over police. We're saying enough. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because like I said, I have the coalition here and Victor Dempsey has been by my side for the last couple of years. Give it up for Victor. He has been a part of the coalition. Him and Joe's mom who's back there. He's been doing this work with me for a number of years and now we are here to continue to fight to get this bill passed. We've been talking about this for years. And so he's gonna give us some background information and all the work that we've been doing. Let's keep this energy going. Let's do a quick call and response. I'm going to say, who keeps us safe? Y'all say, we keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. I want to keep going up the energy of all the councilmen in the Progressive Caucus, and I appreciate everybody standing with not just the coalition, but with all New Yorkers. We have to make our people understand this database is a secret database. Nobody knew about it until our Professor Babe Howell looked it up and forwarded the request and we got all the information back 47,000 new yorkers black and brown right. let me show you something the youngest person on that database 10 years old oh, wow. the oldest person on the database 84 87 excuse me so not only are we uh criminalizing generations we're criminalizing generations nypd thinks the solution to this is locking people up we're here to tell you it is not we just chanted, who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. That's a real statement. I stand here before you as a former gang member. I stand here before you as formerly incarcerated. But now I'm able to go back in the same communities and work with these young men and women to identify the root causes to this. Yeah. We look, we work with the credible messengers. We work with kill opponents. We check in with as many people as we can throughout the city. And we're saying, if you want to get to the root cause and end this, work with us and put the proper resources back into the communities and stop criminalizing everybody. But wait, 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 there is a little bit more. You do not, I repeat, you do not have to form, I mean, commit a criminal act to be added to the database. Guess what? I just told all of y'all I'm formerly gang involved. Unfortunately, I'm on the database. Now, guess what? Everybody who follow my channel, you're all associated with me, so now you're on the database. We can laugh at it now, but is it right? No. That's how this database is operating. Guilty by association. So I'm here to ask everybody, please, stand with the uh, electors and the Progressive Caucus. Follow the gang database. We are on a mission to remove it. We don't want to fix it. We don't want to reform it. We don't want to change it. We do not need this database to address gang violence in New York because we the people can do it ourselves. Thank you.
because I truly believe that housing is health care. So we said, I have introduced the Community Opportunity to Purchase Act.
agenda. Movement, set the agenda. We are facilitating that here in this institution. That's right. So it's because of the grassroots work of groups like Make the Road in My Backyard, ECF Community Land Trust, that someone like, like myself, who is a leftist, can run and win an election. And so I'm really proud to stand here today with you all. There is no progressive left movement if we are not facing the existential threat that we all face of climate, the climate crisis. We have to address this head on. It has to be a priority for this administration and this council. So I'm really proud to advocate for the zero waste package. We have 40 to 42 sponsors on this. The council's already sold. We're already ready to go. We need this administration to put it forward. This bill will have universal curbside mandatory organics collection program. It is one of the fastest, most concrete ways that we can bring down the 1.7 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions that New York City trash has every year. So I'm really proud to stand with you all. I know we're going to make it happen. Shout out to the New York Lawyers for Public Interest. Shout out, Shout out for the National Resource Defense Fund. And thank you to everyone who's here today. Thank you. Banking and our public. 
public banking package that will make sure that we are centering economic justice in communities that for far too long have suffered the consequences of redlining and greenlining right. and all the types of racist lining that has existed before. We're the Progressive Caucus because we're here to transform the direction this city has been going for working families for far too long. So with that, we bring up our majority leader. Thanks everyone, and thank you to Progressive Caucus, and I really want to thank the leadership of Progressive Caucus for not only doing a lot of work this year, but really getting us organized and putting out a really bold agenda for New York City. And having been a former vice chair of Progressive Caucus, I know how hard that actually is, so congratulations on that. Um, all of these legislative packages are supporting the great work of the caucus, but are aimed at making our city fairer and a more equitable place for all. I have actually three bills that are in this agenda. One is what you heard about is the Poor Act, which is aimed at zero waste, which I'm really excited about. And two that I want to speak about, one is the Fair Chance for Housing Act. Yeah! 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 And the other is the Public Banking Package. Yeah! Both are to create more access to housing and to create financial stability for vulnerable New Yorkers. And right now, as it doesn't need to be said, it's been so many times we have a city that faces an unprecedented housing and homelessness pricing that's hurting so many members of our communities. And on any given night, there are over 60,000 people sleeping in a shelter, and that doesn't even include the people that aren't being counted, or the people that are facing housing insecurity that don't make it into that number. And that's why we actually need to start taking big and bold action to get people into stable housing. And that is why I proudly reintroduced the Fair Chance for Housing Act earlier this year. Yeah! yeah. 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 These guys. And, uh, and why I'm urging my colleagues to sign on to the bill and obviously urging the city council to pass that bill as soon as possible. Without this important legislation, we will continue to see denial of people with criminal records who need housing. And this is of no matter how minor the offense or how long ago it happened, leaving <laughs> tens of thousands of New Yorkers locked into an endless revolving door of homelessness and incarceration. And we can't let that continue, right? We can't That's right, we did right. That's right. Uh, uh, that's why we must support our most vulnerable neighbors, and this is a concrete step that we can take right now, this session, to do that. The second bill is package is a public banking package that supports a mission by laying the groundwork for creating a municipal bank here in New York City. Yeah. 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 That's right. We each year collect billions, billions of dollars in taxes to fund public services. But most of this money, if not all of it, is placed into private banks, and more often we don't have a lot of transparency and accountability of where that ends up. That means that we can be unknowingly financing things that will hurt communities or support har supporting harmful industries. This package, however, would make that more transparent by allowing New York to divest money, public money from places there it doesn't belong, and dedicating our tax dollars to investing in local communities, strengthening our economy, and advancing many of the social justice goals that we are talking about here today. And as no better time to do that as we're talking about a fiscal and economic crisis that is facing the city, I think no better time to be talking about that bill and no better time to be talking about removing barriers to housing than right now when we are having a very large conversation in the city about housing and homelessness. So what I want to say is a big thank you to all my colleagues for supporting those bills. Thank you to Professor Buck for putting those on your agenda. And really thank you for everybody standing up here because you guys are really moving the agenda forward. And you, I know you can be anywhere in New York City today right now, but being here means you are standing up for the things that probably that matter to New Yorkers. And a very big thank you to you guys for being here today. Yeah. Majority leader for support. Um, so when we talk about the housing crisis, we know there are people that are much more vulnerable to homelessness. And those people are often swept up in mass incarceration, are swept up in high unemployment levels, and are swept up in discrimination that exists. So once they've paid their dues to society, they can't find stable housing because of housing discrimination. And today I want to shout out the Fortune Society who's here, CPA who's here, Community Voices Heard who's here, and the Legal Aid Society, we're going to hear from Robert on the Fair Transfer Housing Bill that will transform and 
hopefully eliminate those barriers to housing. Thank you, council member. Thank you to the Progressive Caucus on behalf of the Legal Aid Society and also the Fair um, Chance for Housing campaign. Um, we urge the city council to pass and we urge the mayor to sign intro 632. Uh, prohibiting housing discrimination on the basis of an arrest or a criminal justice or a criminal record is a racial and housing justice issue as over three-fourths of New York City residents with convictions are people of color. That's right. right. DHA's data indicates that recent release from jail or prison is the main is one of the main reasons that people enter shelter. Prejudice against them because of their past involvement with the criminal legal system significantly hinders their efforts to secure permanent housing. Without housing, they're also excluded from the benefits that it provides, such as safety, stability, health benefits, the ability to secure employment, and family reunification, benefits that most of us take for granted. That's right. It must be recognized that people facing these obstacles don't just go away. They're still part of society, except they're part of society and their efforts towards full restoration are being frustrated by prejudicial practices that relegate them to the seemingly permanent instability and trauma of homelessness. This prejudice also increases the likelihood of recidivism. The homeless population is already specifically targeted with laws against loitering, sleeping in public, and panhandling. This lack of resources only increases the likelihood they will be further ensnared by the criminal legal system. The city shelter system in jail should not be a revolving door for people struggling simply because they don't have the stability that a home provides. Instead, they should have full access to housing, a resource that is critical to improving their circumstances. If someone's been punished for a crime, they should not be endlessly punished. There must be a path towards reacclimating into society. Stable housing is a critical foundational component of that pursuit. We urge passage of intro 632 and we urge that the government take steps to reacclimate this population into society as it is a significant public safety and public health issue. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. All right. So you all heard that we have a very large progressive caucus. I want to give a shout out to Council Members Eric Bacher, who was here and joined us. Councilwoman Woo! Rita Joseph, who's our education chair, yeah. joined us today, and Councilwoman Julie Wong, who's here as well, joining us. Woo! So we're running out of time because it's almost two o'clock, but I do want you all to put your hands together for a Progressive Caucus OG, yep. our public advocate, Jumani Williams. Woo! We called you all Jumani, don't say that. <laughs> I'm coming to grips and I'm an OG. Me and Brad are OG. It's hard, but I'm coming to grips. What's up, progressives? How you doing? Woo! Peace and blessings, love and light to everyone. Thank you, uh, council members, uh, De La Rosa and Gutierrez, vice co-chairs, and uh, the chairs, council members Hanif and Ressler, and the entire caucus for all that they're doing now. I am proud to be an OG. I'm proud to be one of the founding members Woo! of the caucus. I am more proud of that whatever ground we lay is being surpassed by the courage of the council members. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And whenever we're in some space and time, there's always some people that want to conserve the inequity that exists and some folks who want to progress forward. So I'm always proud to be part of the people who want to progress forward. It's also very ironic to me that there are sometimes leaders that want to push back and disparage progressives while proclaiming how progressive they are. <laughs> and that says to me that progressive, the progressive thinking is the right way to go. Uh, I'm proud to be a co-prime sponsor, myself and the uh, chair, Council Member Rivera, of Intro 549, which is the banned solitary bill. Yeah! Uh, society is gonna look at how we treat our most vulnerable, and we are failing on so many levels. Uh, we lost our 17th person incarcerated just this week, That's right. Eric Tavera. This is happening time and time again. Rikers Island is in crisis. It is a moral blight, moral stain on our city and has been for a very long time. That's right. The only thing that Rikers exists to do 
is perpetuate violence. That's right. And unfortunately, in times like this, we often see black and brown people pitted against black and brown people. So in this space, I'm going to lift up people who are on both sides of those bars and who are in danger. That is, the people who work there, like corrections officers, who are being harmed, who are being molested, and people who are incarcerated, even worse, who are dying. They are dying, and as far as I'm concerned and understand, no one in Rikers has been sentenced to death. That's right. And so we have people on both sides of those balls who come from the same community, and whatever they're doing now is causing the violence. It is not working. It has nothing to do with my bill. What we do know is solitary is torture, and that cannot be a response to what is happening in that jail system. You cannot be a person who says they are against solitary and then be against the bill that bans it. So I'm very thankful for the Progressive Caucus for making this a priority. Now let's get one step further and be the city that actually bans solitary. We are 
know it. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Albert Scott with the East New York Community Land Trust, um, which is based out in East New York, but democratically led by East New York and Brownville residents. I'm here today and so excited to join these dynamic legislatures in pushing this progressive, progressive pieces of legislation. One thing we know in East New York and we found out, legislation has two tenets. Modify behavior, direct the money, the land to the people. That's what it's supposed to be. That's why it's so urgent and incumbent on passing the land bank bill. In our community, we were able to pound the pavement and identify, identify 255 vacant city-owned lots. The question you have to ask yourself, is it going to community or is it going to private development? With this, with legislation like this that will prioritize community land trust, it will focus on community first. That's why I will always start off with community, then ownership must be followed. When there's ownership, there's more stability. Just think about that. In our community, we are tired for fighting for lottery. Because I don't think anyone won that 700 million that's coming up yet. So we are pushed from ownership principles to now fighting for lottery. It's all about community ownership and it's very important that these dynamic bills, the land bank bills, the public banking bill, pass now. Community ownership. Community ownership. ownership. Have a great game. Woo! Thank you all. So we want to thank, first of all, all of the groups and the coalition. Yeah. Take a ride. Thank you. 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 Thank you.